Hey everyone, welcome back to Code Row. In this tutorial series, we're gonna be using Ascend Combat Framework in order to create an ability bar or a hot bar, along with a skill book where you can drag and drop from your skill book onto your hot bar and then click those buttons for one from one through nine or one through zero in order to cast an ability or cast a spell. Kind of like World of Warcraft or different MMO RPGs. And this has been a lot of people's requests on Patreon. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna to try to make the videos short and to the point as much as possible. And if you do want something outside of ACF, feel free to let me know in the comments below and let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over to my full sample content folder. In this case, I am using ultimate, but it doesn't matter if you're using ultimate or full sample. So I'm gonna just go over to my content folder, right click, create a new folder, and I'm gonna name this something like um, hotbar. And this is just so I can stuff everything in this folder without getting too lost. And there, for this video, we're only gonna have one bit widget blueprint anyway. I'll actually call this action bar. So I'll double click to open this up, right click, and I wanna create under user interface. Under user interface, I'm gonna look for a widget blueprint. Go ahead and select user widget, and I'm gonna call this something like action, action bar slots underscore WBP for widget blueprint. I'm gonna now double click that and open it up to open up the blueprint editor. And once this is open, there are quite a few things that I need to do. So the first thing I need to add is I'm gonna go over click this library tab and I'm gonna just drag a border over here where it says action bar slots underscore WBP. And now you'll see this border which is covering our entire screen. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add an overlay. And then under my overlay, I'm gonna add a button which is gonna go inside the overlay. And then I'm gonna add an image in my button. And now I'm gonna click on my border and I'm gonna set the padding just to five. Now that we've nested those elements, the first thing I'm gonna do is hit my, I'm gonna click image, and then I'm gonna drop down this brush under appearance, and I'm going to open the image size, and I'm gonna change this from 32 by 32 to 128 pixels by 128, just like that. And I'm just gonna change this top right where it says fill screen to desired. And now you're gonna see it's gonna get rid of all that extra side. And we're just gonna see one square, which is gonna be our one ability. So now you see the actual size and shape. And now I'm gonna go back to border. And then under brush color, I'm gonna choose something kind of like a dark gray. So for my RGB, I'm just gonna do 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 to get this dark gray on the outside. And I'm also gonna change the padding to five just to give it some space. And I'll give us some padding around the whole thing. And now for the overlay, I'm just gonna put the padding to five. And for the button, I'm gonna change some setting in the color and opacity and the background color. So for the background color of my button, I'm gonna open this drop down and change the alpha to zero. Then I'm gonna to go to my image and change the padding to five. So now with the overlay selected, I'm gonna go ahead and add a progress bar into it. And this is gonna determine our cooldown for our ability. So I'm gonna click on progress bar. I'm gonna click on progress bar and I wanna fill this whole thing up. So over here next to horizontal alignment, I'm gonna click fill horizontally. And for vertical alignment, I'm gonna do fill vertically. And now next to the percent, I'm just gonna set it to 0.5 just so we get a visible res representation, but I, a visual representation, but I don't want it to go left to right. I'm actually gonna go ahead and change this bar fill type to bottom to top, just so we can see our bar. So as soon as we use an ability, it's gonna go down. And then once it's ready to use, it'll be at zero. So I'll change to 0.5. Now I'm gonna change the fill color and opacity. And I'm gonna choose that gray that I had earlier. So it's just 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and I'm gonna change the alpha to 0.5. I'll actually make it a little darker, so I'm just gonna do 0, 0, 0 for a full black, just so when it's used, it's gonna look like a more dark overlay on it, and then, well, it's, it'll be fully visible once it's ready to use again. And don't worry, we'll add some special effects in a later video. Now I'll hit compile and save. We're gonna go over the ACF widget that shows our entire UI. So in my case, since I'm using the ultimate sample, I'm gonna open that ultimate HUD just by finding it, double clicking on it, and then there's a, there's a HUD class already set in here. I'm gonna open this up by clicking on this magnifying glass just to find it in my content folder. Double click to open that up. And now we can see the entirety of the, of the HUD. So when I hit play, this is everything that I see and it looks perfect. And if you have a full sample, it's probably called WBP underscore full sample HUD and you can follow the same steps. So now what I'm gonna do is just drag and drop a horizontal box into my overlay master. And now in my horizontal box, what I'm gonna do now is go to my library or go to my palette and look for my action bar that I set up. So my action bar slots, and I'm just gonna drag it over the horizontal. And you're gonna see it's at the very top left and we want it to be down here in the middle. So in order to put that in the middle, there are a few things that I need to do. 
So first, I'm just going to set this center align horizontally. And then I also wanted to go to the bottom by clicking this bottom align vertically. And I also want quite a few skills, not just one. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this action bar slot and either use the command control D or I can just click on this duplicate eight times. So I'm just going to do it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it looks a little, a little big to my preference. I'm going to click on my horizontal box, open up this transform tab. And there's a section here for scale, which is our X and Y. Ideally, we just want to leave this as uh, the same number. So one, one will be like this. If I were to change this to like 0.5, our bars will look weirdly tall. And I'll do something like 0.6 by 0.6. They might be a little small, but that's totally fine. And it's up to your preference on how you want to set it. Another thing that I probably should have done is I'm going to go ahead and delete all the action bar slots except for the very first one. And I'm going to add a little padding around it, maybe like something like five, just so that there's a little bit of spaces between my bars. And now I'm just going to duplicate this eight times and you'll see that there's a little space in between. And to me, that looks perfectly fine. If you want to raise it up a little bit, personal choice, you can just expand this padding while you're in the horizontal box and change the padding of the bottom for something like 50, 500 might be a little odd, but I'll just leave mine at zero. So I'll hit compile and save. And now when I go over to my ultimate map and hit play, you're going to see that there are action bars and we haven't set those up with skills or anything, but we just want to make sure that we can see it on our UI using ACF. And that completes the first tutorial. Thanks for watching Code with Row. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video shortly. The link will be in the description below when it's up. It'll also be posted in my Discord and so on. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching Code with Row.